What is the biggest pain point of Kubernetes cluster? Upgrading. We have all been there. We upgraded something and something broke. But upgrading is critical because the newer Kubernetes versions has security patches and security fixes. So in this video, I'm going to go over methodically how can you upgrade your Kubernetes cluster running on AWS as well as some of the tools that you can use to help the upgrade process. All right, let's get started. So an Amazon EKS cluster looks like this. You have the control plane, which is managed by AWS. Then you have data plane, where multiple EC2 are running as the worker node, and your application is running inside a container, which is running inside a pod, which is running inside one of those EC2 or multiple EC2 in the data plane. So when we talk about Kubernetes version or EKS version, so your control plane is running, let's say version 1.26. What do we mean when we say data plane version? What that means is this Amazon EC2s is running AMIs for specific EKS versions. And a couple of things to keep in mind, EKS supports four version at a time. So you get around one year to stay on one version. And after that, you may be forced to upgrade. However, we released a new feature called EKS Extended Support where you can stay on older versions for one more year after it is deprecated. So in total, two years. If you, let's say uh, version 1.26 just came out and you just adopted it, so you're good for one year. After one year, EKS will no longer support this version 1.26, but you can sign up for EKS extended support, keep on using it for one more year. However, you will have to pay extra for it. And the best practice is always go ahead and upgrade it. Now, how do you upgrade it and what does it mean? So a system admin can update the EKS control plan. So this is what will change the Kubernetes version. And you can upgrade this using console, CLI, or EKS CTL, or any other infrastructure as code. So at this point, the control plan is running with version 1.27. The worker nodes can still run two versions behind the control plan. So you can keep running the EC2 worker node AMIs for version 1.26. But this is the important part. Let's see your workload may look like this. Deployment API version apps slash v1 beta 2. It is possible that for Kubernetes version 1.27, this API version is deprecated. So this apps slash v1 beta 2 no longer works. So what will happen? The pods that are running, they will be running fine, but if you try to deploy another application with this API version, or the pods needs to scale up, all those activity goes through API server, right? So API server, the deploy, let's say deploying another application with this API version, API server will validate this API version. So this goes through the mutating controller phase where it validates if all the things are correct. Since version 1.27 no longer supports this app slash v1 beta 2, this pod will not get scheduled. It will get rejected. And your running workloads will start failing. As soon as something scales down, it needs to scale up, or you try to deploy something, they will all start to fail. So even if the worker nodes are still on the previous version AMI, it does not matter. As soon as you update the control plane, it will go to the newer version and all the APIs should be conforming to this newer version. And I get into the calls with customer a lot where they upgraded and some things are breaking and they will say, hey, Mr. Architect from AWS, why did you break this? So the thing is, AWS has no control over this because EKS runs on open source upstream Kubernetes. We just make sure everything is secure and we just release it in the EKS. AWS does not deprecate any API version for Kubernetes from one Kubernetes to one another Kubernetes. We simply follow what Kubernetes releases. We literally take the same packages. But being said that, how can you prevent this? So let's take a look. 
If you want to know more tips and tricks like this that comes in the cloud interview along with the study tips, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. As a welcome gift, you get to download this beautiful PDF with many different cloud question answer with the study notes. Sign up for free at cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. I'll give the link in the description. Now back to the video. So before upgrading control plan, you need to find out if applications will run fine. So you need to utilize tools to validate API endpoints of application objects on the data plane. So you need some tools which is gonna scan all the running objects or running deployments and find out what APIs they are using and whether it will break if you go to the next version. You could use AWS Native EKS Upgrade Insights which can tell you what APIs will be breaking or you can use open source tools like Pluto, Cubent, etc. You can use kubectl convert plugin to change the manifests from one API version to the next where it is needed. And you can also check Kubernetes change logs to see the changes. Not all Kubernetes changes are backward compatible, right? So there are some systems where it doesn't matter whatever changed, they always make it backward compatible. So in those cases, so if I go back to the previous slide, if it was backward compatible, doesn't matter what, maybe you could be Kubernetes version 1.29, this should still work, but that's not the case. However, Kubernetes will give you few versions before they make the permanent change. So if they say this app slash v1 beta 2 is gonna go away and the new should be apps.v1, they will keep both for a couple versions so that you can test it out. And then in one version, they will remove this v1 beta 2. So pay close attention before upgrading which ones are deprecated, deprecated. So that's your application. But beyond application, there are some other things that run on your Kubernetes cluster. So what is the other thing that's also a major component of the cluster? Add-ons, right? And add-ons at the end of the day also runs as pod in your EC2. So before you upgrade, you also need to keep in mind to check the add-ons. Now the good news is if the add-ons is AWS managed, we will release new add-on version that you can just take and upgrade it. However, add-ons are not automatically upgraded. Uh, you have to go and tell that, hey, let's go update the add-ons. For third-party add-ons, obviously third-party is out of AWS control, you need to test add-on with the new version or contact their support to see if it is compatible with the new version. Now for EKS, you can only update one EKS version at a time. So let's say you are in 1.26, you cannot go directly from 1.26 to 1.29. You have to go from 1.26 to 1.27, 1.27 to 1.28, so on and so forth. So next, the big pain point is upgrading these AMIs, right? Basically the control plane is kind of easy. You do all the testing, then you come and then either through API or the system admin just go and updates the control plane. Updating the AMI could be a little painful, especially if you have been using cluster autoscaler, you have node group and then you have launch config. So you have to go update the launch config, then you have to run recycle command, etc. The newest generation cluster autoscaler, which is Carpenter, helps you automatically update the AMI. And this not only work for um, version to version, even let's say if you are in version 1.26 and AWS releases new AMI for the same version with some security patches, Carpenter can keep them up to date. So find out my free tutorial. I'll give the link somewhere around here to learn more about Carpenter. It is a CNCF project and it is getting very popular. I don't want to make this video super long, so check it out. I'll see you guys and girls in the next lecture. Bye.